Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Goa, which is a game all about competing Portuguese spice merchants trying to find all the, the peppers and the cinnamon and the cloves and the nutmeg and the, the, the ginger that's, that can be found in India and ship it back to Portugal for fame and glory. Okay, sound good? Let's do it. This is going to be a two-player game I'm demonstrating today, and I will be the first player. I've got the first player marker, this flag here. And I start out with two colonists to help me found colonies. Four ships, three plus one is four, four ships to ship stuff back to the old world. To, well, you know, back, back, back to Portugal. And I also start with five bucks, five ducats. Jen, she's in the same situation as me. Four boats, two colonists, but she starts with ten. So basically my first player marker puts me at quite a disadvantage in terms of money and we need this money because we're about to go into an auction. Oh, also I should say at the beginning, both of us start at level zero in all five tracks of our, I don't know, our business, our development. You know, there's the, the ability, we can improve over the course of the game, our ability to make additional ships, we start with four, we can make more, to harvest spice from our plantations and our colonies, to tax, to make money, to basically lead expeditions to get these expedition cards, or to have more colonists to supplement the colonists we already have when we're trying to colonize places. So we can, over the course of the game, improve in all of these, but at the beginning of the game, we're we're basically at the schlub level zero of all of them. Both of us are. Okay, now, so let's start. What's going to happen is we are going to have, well, we, there's this randomly generated grid of business opportunities, plantations, um, you know, uh, resources for ships or, you know, ways to get more colonists, you know, get extra actions. There's all kinds of things. And every time you play the game, this random, this, this grid of five by five is randomly populated with all of the A tiles. Cause we're in the, the first half of the game is the A phase where all the A tiles are out. Second half of the game, we get to all the really sweet, yummy B tiles. At the beginning of the game though, this is all set up randomly and four tiles don't show up. These are the four that won't be in this game. Those ones up there, which includes, I don't know, the uh, bonus points for duty and crop rotation and uh, so, okay. Anyway, those are not in, these are the ones. And we are about to start doing an auction. And as the first player, I'm gonna get that started by deciding what are we auctioning. And what I gotta think about is what do I really care about? Like, um, do I really want to get a lot more colonists? Do I wanna get a lot more ships? Do I want to get colonists slowly, one each round over the next eight rounds? Or do I just want four colonists right now, really quick? Or do I want to get a nutmeg plantation? Or do I want to get a cinnamon plantation so I can start harvesting spices so I can send them back home, which is the name of the game, really. What's important to me? Hmm. I think I would like to get heavy duty into... Oh, it's a tough choice. These are all good things. Do I just want to have two extra actions, which gives me a lot of flexibility, but it's a one-time thing. These red ones, though, they're really nice because if I get one of these in this first turn, it'll pay out for the remainder of the, the all eight rounds of this game. So it'll score me eight times. So it'd be really nice to get one of those. I think I will... What the hell? I want to get the colonists. So I'm going to... Put my starting flag over here, and I put my number one marker on it, which means this the first auction of this year, of this round, is going to be for the first player marker. And, you know, uh, hmm. yeah, the, the first player marker. Whoever wins this auction will become first player. But we're not going to have the auction right yet. I've just put this down. I've declared kind of the area. There's all these business opportunities, but this is the area that we're going to be focusing on, me and Jen, right now. Now, I put the one, so Jen gets to put down a number two. And she can put it anywhere adjacent, including diagonal. So she could go put it here, here, or here. And she will be creating the second auction we'll do this year. And I think, you know what, she likes that colonist, so she's going to try and get it. And I'm like kind of bummed by that. I mean, I should have thought about that, but you know, say la vie, that's what's happened. For my third one, I think I will, let's see. Now I could take any of these five spaces for the third auction to be. So, I mean, I've lost out my chance, or well, I haven't. I mean, there's still gonna be a bid for this, but Jen has the advantage now because she's put her marker. So in the auction, in the, in the first auction, I'll have the advantage. In the second auction, she'll have the advantage. In the third auction, I'll have the advantage. And what do I want to do? 
Where do I want to have an advantage? I mean, maybe I just want to get a plantation so I can start generating some stuff. Maybe I just want to get some, you know, if I can't get colonists slowly, I could just get three colonists really, really fast and jumpstart my game. You know, I think I'm going to try and get a plantation. I'm going to start doing what we're supposed to do, getting sp harvesting spices so I can ship them home. Okay, so I am taking the, or am I taking the ginger? Or am I taking the pepper? No, or is cinnamon. I'm actually, I'm going to take the ginger, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I'm happy with that. I'm going to go with the ginger. All right, there we go. Now, um, we're, we're done. Uh, because we're in a two-player game, we've put down, th where there will be three auctions. If we were playing a four-player game, there would be five auctions. You know, but, but pretty straightforward. There's always one more than the number of players. And so, we are now going to start the first auction, which is for first player. Since this is mine and I have the advantage, what that means is Jen has to make the opening bid. And let's see. So now remember, but she has an advantage too because she starts with 10 bucks to my five. And so she's got to make an opening bid. And she has to think hard about this for a couple of reasons. The auctions in Goa are really unique, really different, very, very non standard. And I'll show how in a second. So, what's her opening bid going to be? Um, well, she'd like to be first player because not only does that mean, you know, she gets. You know, she gets to place two of the auction markers for the next year, but also whoever gets first player, you see that little A card, gets an action card. So whoever is first player will get to do one extra action this year. And Jen would like to get that extra action. That is worth a lot to her. So I think she is willing to pay four bucks. Okay, she's going to go for four bucks. So uh, the first auction, Jen says, I bid four. And now here's where things get interesting. This is not a round robin auction. I'm not going to go to five and then she goes to six and on and on and on. She, that was her opening bid. That is her only bid. And now I have a decision to make. Do I let her take that for four bucks or do I, um, do I basically match her offer? Because here's the thing. Here's, here's the first thing that's odd about the auctions in this game. I don't have to raise her. In fact, I don't even have to beat her because this is my auction and I have the advantage here. I have to, I, to, to beat her, I have to bid one less. So if she bid four, that means I've got to pay three bucks to win this auction because I have the advantage. So she bid four. Do I want to pay three and hold on to first player? Well, that might be worthwhile, although it's two problems. That will pretty much bankrupt me. I'll only have two bucks left. Which means it'll be very, very difficult for me to um, get. Uh, chances are Jen will win both of these tiles, and that would be devastating for her to win both of those tiles. I don't want that to happen. And then the other thing that's cool too, she bid four bucks. If she wins this, she does not send that four bucks to the bank, she gives it to me. This is my auction. Uh, because it's my piece, all of the benefits go my way. I get a discount. If Jen wins the auction, I get the money. If I win the auction, I'm sorry, if Jen wins the auction, she gives the money to me. It doesn't go to the bank. On the flip side, if I win the auction, I don't give the money to her. I give it to the bank. So everything is in my favor on this. She is bid four. Do I want to pay three, bankrupt myself, and hold on to it? No, nope. I'm going to go for it. Honey, you win. I'm not going to counter your bid. I'm not going to pay three bucks to take that away from you. And she then gives me four bucks. And now the power shifted mightily. I now have eight bucks and she only has six. But she won. She beat me in my own auction. And so that means she gets for the first player marker and that little A action. She gets an action card. So this year she will get to do four actions where I only get to do three. And that's huge. But she had to pay for it. The balance of power has shifted. Now, anyway, so we're done with the first auction. We move on to the second auction. This one for colonists, which is Jen's. Now Jen has the advantage. She has all the power, which means I'm the one. I have to make the opening bid. And to beat me, Jen gets a discount. And if I win, I have to give her the money. And if she wins, the money goes into the bank. So it doesn't. So all that stuff I just talked about flips. And now I got to decide, how much money am I going to put up for that colonist? Now see, for starters, I do want it. Because if I get this, every, every round or year, and there's eight years in this game, I'll get a colonist for free. So winning this gives me eight colonists. That's a pretty big deal when you need like 12 colonists to, to colonize Calcutta or 10 colonists to colonize Madras. That's a big deal. So I, I should pay a fair bit of money for it. But if I do, I'll give all that money to Jen and I'll give her the advantage back. And in fact, if I give her enough money back, she will very likely win in the last auction. So I got to think about that. Do I, 
How much money do I give it? How much money you know, is she willing to pay? Because of course she would like to have that too. So if I bid four bucks, I'm gonna be right back to where I was. I'm gonna have five bucks and, um, you know, and Jen will go up to nine. Is that what I wanna do? Um, or I'm sorry, yeah, she'll, she'll go right back up to 10. So you know, the balance will be restored. I will have gained nothing. But on the flip side, if I bid four bucks, that might be enough for her to say, oh, you know what, I want that colonist. She'll, take, she'll pay three bucks to, um, to keep it. And that three bucks won't go to me. That means she would then have three bucks left over. Huh. Or, see, I, I don't want to get broke this fast. I don't want to just reset myself and basically have gotten the colonist while she got the extra action. So if I bid three, I'll keep most of my money, but it'll only cost her two bucks to hold on to it. And that's just giving her that for a steal. It's tough. It's a tough decision. I think, okay, I will. I will bid four. So I'm just going to flip the switch and go right back to where we started. I say I bid four, and now Jen has to decide. Is she going to take the four back and thereby give me eight colonists over the course of the game? Or is she going to pay three bucks and get this for a steal? I think she's going to surprise me. She's going to pay three bucks. So uh, five, she gets two and change, right? Yes. So she's now down to three, but... She only she she got the discount. I, I bid four. She got the discount and only had to pay three. And now she has gotten this colonist ability. And it comes over here. And every turn for the rest of the game, she will get a colonist. And now we come back to the final one. This is my auction. I've got the advantage, not only because it's my auction, but also because I got all the money in the world. Jen has to do the opening bid. She could bid one, two, or three bucks. And she's got to decide: Does she want to bid high? Well, she could just bid all her money. So that you know, it'll cost me more to hold on to it. Yeah, with heck, she's just going to bid everything because she figures there's no way I'm going to I'm not, I'm going to let her have it, and so she's just going to try to drive the price up as high as she can. She says I'll bid three, and now I've got an interesting thing. All I have to do is pay two, and I'll get this. I will get this for a screaming deal at only two ducats, or alternatively, I could take Jen's three bucks and completely bankrupt her. And then I will really be able to run roughshod over her in the next auction. But unfortunately, since she's got the flag, she will control where that next auction starts. But chances are, I'd be able to get both um, in the next auction. But that means she, okay, I'm not going to let her do that. I definitely want to get at least one tile so I don't fall behind the curve. So she bid three. That means I get a discount because it's my auction. I'll bid two to keep it. All right, so the two goes away, and I am now the proud owner of a ginger plantation. You can see in my little space here, I've got space for up to four plantations. I've just filled up one of them, and it comes fully stocked, locked and loaded with two ginger, just waiting to be shipped back to the old world. Okay, there we go. That is the end of the auction phase. The business has been concluded. Jen won two of the three auctions, but it cost her. She is now down to three bucks, and I am at seven bucks. Okay, so you know it's, she started with ten, I have five. The total dynamic is flipped. Now we get to the second half of the year where we actually do our actions. First, we always do an auction where we, 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 we find these new business opportunities, we bid for them, we lock them in place. Then we do all the actions we're going to do for the year. We get to do three of them, and they're tracked by these three markers. So. Jen is the first player. She took the first player, so she will do the first action. I put this here to indicate that we're in action number one. What is Jen going to do? Well, let's talk about those actions. There are six actions we can choose from. Every year, we get to do three actions. So we could just do the same action three times if we want, or we could do three different ones. And in fact, this year, because Jen's got this, she can do four actions if she wants. What are the actions? They are build ships. Uh, which is and how well we bid ships is determined by how much we've upgraded our shipbuilding ability. Harvest our, from our colonies and our plantations. Now this is not something Jen's going to do because she has no plantations and she has no colonies, so that's not going to be much good. But you know we can harvest and that's how we can get more spices, so we can send them back to the old world and do other stuff with them too. Next action. We could tax. We need money. We need money bad. Jen needs money very, very bad going into the next auction because she is so poor. And at the beginning of the game, if we do a tax action, you get four bucks. But again, you can see it increases over the course of the game if you improve your taxation ability. 
we can go on an expedition, which means we will draw an expedition card, and these can be very powerful cards. They can do a bunch of stuff. They can be free colonists. They can, they can be a lot of interesting rule-changing stuff. Plus, if you don't play them, they are worth points at the end of the game. A lot of points can be had if you get the right, if you finish the right expeditions. Okay, so we could do an expedition, or we could colonize, which means in the game, well, you saw how I've taken up one of my four spaces of plantation. We also have four spaces for colonies. Each of us will be able to make a colony in Quinlan, Cochin, Madras, and Calcutt. And if we wanted to, we can do the colonization action to set one of these up. The cheapest one is always Quinlan. It takes six colonists. Now, at the beginning of the game, we each have two colonists to our name. And if this were further down, say if this were here, Jen would effectively have six colonists. She'd have the two in her hand plus four kind of permanently on retainer. But at the beginning, we don't have any. So colonization is very, very tough. It's tough to get those six colonists at the beginning of the game unless you increase your colonization. So that's five of our actions. Build ships, harvest, tax, expedition, or colonize. The sixth action is improve any one of these facets of our operation, improve any of these things. And to improve them, we need to send our spices back to the old world. If Jen wanted to improve her ability to tax, so she'd make six bucks whenever she taxes instead of four, she would have to send one pepper on one ship. So that's a picture of a, basically it's a ship, a picture of a ship with a pepper on it, just kind of shrunk down. She would basically have to discard a pepper and discard one of her ships to send those back to Portugal, and that means she would improve her ability to tax. So that's why getting these spices is so important, because without the spices, you cannot improve your lot in life. But you also need ships to improve your lot in life as well. So those are your six actions. Jen, we each get to do three. Jen gets a bonus fourth one. Let's go. Jen is the first one. What is she gonna do? I think, for starters, well, she's plum broke, so no two ways about it. She's definitely gonna tax. So her first action is taxing, that means she gets four more bucks. So, so, so her first action was taxing. My first action, what do I wanna do? Well, I think I would like to ship I would like to, I'm, I'm gonna do that six action. I'm gonna improve the quality of one of my abilities, which means I have two ginger. That means I could improve my shipping ability, my shipbuilding ability, because if I send one ginger back, which I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna send a ginger on a ship, so I'm losing both of these resources. They basically just go back you know, to, the, to the supply. So I paid one ship, one ginger, and I have improved my ability to make ships. Now, before, if I were to have done the shipbuilding action, I would have generated one ship. Now if I do it, I generate two ships. That was our first of three actions. So now we say, hey, because it comes around to Jen again, we put the two up. Because it's it can be, things can get really complex. It can be really easy to lose track of where we are, so it's really good to have these little reminders. Jen's turn, we're on the second round of, of uh, actions. What is she gonna do now? She's made some money, so she's got a little bit of money for the next, auction, but you know, I've still got more. Do I? No, we're actually, we're tied. We, okay, so she's gonna start doing some other stuff. I think her next action is, she's gonna go on an expedition, which means she gets to draw one expedition card and her hand size, when we're at this low level, is one. So she gets to draw one and that's it. Wait, actually, do you draw one or do you draw two and keep one? Why am I remembering that? Is that right? I don't think so. Maybe it is. Arg, shoot. I'm sorry, I just played another game that has a lot of card drawing. Earlier today, I was playing City of Council. City of Council, so that's kind of fresh in my mind. Let me just look up really quick. I don't want to get these two games mixed up. Um, the Expedition Action allows you to draw each row. Um, so it's numbers. Right, so the action. Yeah, okay, it is one. It's in, in City of Council, you draw two and you keep one. The action allows the player to draw Expedition Card Supply each row. Some maximum our cards, yeah. So yes, Jen will get to draw one. Sorry, I didn't want to get mixed up in my head. I'll be doing a run through for city council very soon, by the way, folks. Anyway though, in the meantime, go first. Jen is gone on an expedition and what did she find? Ah, okay. Now, actually, I should say, she hasn't gone on the expedition yet. She has the potential. This is a potential expedition she can go on. She can do it anytime she wants. It's a free thing. It does not require one of her three actions. It's a free thing she can do on any action. And if she goes on this expedition, well, actually, well, no, here's the thing. 
Um, basically, she can play this card anytime she wants, and it will get her two additional colonists. She already has two. This will be two more. And then she will have almost enough to go and get a colony in Quinlan. That'd be nice. And so she can play this anytime she wants. She can play it right now as part of her action. Or if at the end, you can ignore this. This is uh, this thing in the bottom left is only for a special case thing during the colonization action. I'm going to demonstrate that very shortly. So this is really not that interesting. Ignore that. She, once it's in her hand, she can either trade this card in to get two colonists. Basically, she buys them off with the opportunity of this expedition. Or she can hold on to this card for the rest of the game. Because at the end of the game, if she still got it in her hand, it starts becoming a set collection thing. This by itself is worth one point. But if she has more cards with the tiger symbol, it can be worth three points, six points, nine points. You can get a lot of points by having um, a lot of matching expedition cards. So anyway, this goes into her hand. It's secret. I have no idea what it is. By the way, strictly speaking, I have no idea how much money she's got either. It's supposed to be hidden information as well. But in a two-player game, it's really easy to track how much money everybody has. With more players, of course, you lose track. But with two players, it, a lot of people recommend you just play with open hands anyway because one player is going to count, so you might as well play open-handed. Anyway, this goes into Jen's secret hand. She has the potential to launch an expedition. And again, her maximum hand size is one. That was her second action. My second action now. I think... Because I have done such a wonderful job um, improving my shipbuilding, I'm going to do a shipbuilding. I'm going to build two ships. So I get one, two. And so now, I started with the game with four ships, now I've got five ships. That was my second action. Now we're going to go on to the third action. And I think, because Jen got, drew this card, she's going to gamble a little bit. She is going to try... Yeah, no, actually, there's no gamble here at all. She's going to do the colonization action. She wants to found a colony. Me, I may, I've got a plantation somewhere in India. Jen is going to make a colony in these very specific places. Okay, so she does the colonization action. She starts with zero colonists. Like I said, later on, she might start with four colonists or even six colonists. But right now, she starts with zero colonists. But the word goes out. The Jen is wanting to found... Oh no, first of all, what she does is she declares where she's going to found her colony. She declares she will do it in Quinlan because it costs the fewest amount of colonists. She says, I'm going to found a colony in Quinlan. The word now goes out and we'll see if anybody shows up to come to her colony. This is the uh, main random element of the game. We draw a card and reveal it. The number two. So far, two colonists have shown up to join Jen's colony. Let's. And every time we do this, every time we found a colony, we draw two cards. So let's see what else Jen gets. Three. That was a really nice draw. Five colonists in total have joined Jen. So she's got five plus zero. She just needs one more. So she only has to give one of her. I have to give up one of her colonist cards. So she's still holding on to one colonist. So by only spending one colonist, because she got a really lucky draw, these can be anywhere from one, two, or three. So you could get anywhere from two to six additional colonists joining you. So Jen knew she was going to make it. Because she had, if she needed to, she had this. This would give her two extra colonists. But um, you know, she was pretty confident that she was going to draw enough so that between that and drawing this, anyway. So. So she hasn't had to play this. She could still hold on to this and maybe get some more Tiger cards for bonus points at the end of the game. Okay, anyway though, she has successfully founded a Quinlan colony. That means we come over here. There are five colonies that could be established in Quinlan. She has to choose one of them. She could choose the one that makes peppers and cinnamon. That's green and brown. The one that makes ginger and cinnamon. The one that makes cloves and, what's red? Nutmeg. Uh, cinnamon and nutmeg. Or cloves and ginger. And really what she's deciding here is what is she going to advance early? Because I mean, as you saw, I needed ginger to improve my ships. G um, either, you know, and that's true for either of us. We need cinnamon. Cinnamon is the primary way we improve our harvesting. If Jen says she really wants to double down and do a lot more expeditions, maybe she wants to get something that generates nutmeg because nutmeg is a very common ingredient in going on expeditions or improving her ability to do expeditions. So let's say she wants that. So that means she is either going to want the one Quinlan that does nutmeg and peppers or nutmeg and what do you call it? Uh, cloves. Well, peppers would allow her to improve her taxing ability right off the bat. Cloves would allow her to improve her colonist ability. She's going to go for the peppers. All right, so we put this one back. Jen has now founded a colony, and this is permanent. 
So, and it comes fully clipped. So Jen can choose, does she want a pepper in it or a nutmeg? Because she would be able to use that pepper or nutmeg to improve her taxation or her card drawing. She, it's all about the nutmeg for her, so she's gonna take this. All right, now that was her third action. Remember we're on three, so now it's my third action. I get one more action. You know, I would like to improve my ships again, but to improve from um, this level to this level, I need to ship a ginger and a cinnamon. I don't have any cinnamon. Uh, now there's cinnamon plantations. Maybe I'll get a cinnamon plantation on the next round. Then the two, my ginger and my cinnamon, can work together to allow me to make even more ships. And then, you know, ship the stuff back and improve even more, etc., etc. But what else could I do? I'm thinking maybe I should tax just so that I can stay in the lead. I know Jen taxed once. So if I tax right now and get four bucks, I'll be very, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna tax, uh, so I'll get uh, four bucks, which means I, so now I know I'm loaded. That was my final action. And now we move on to bonus actions. And Jen's gotta decide. Now she doesn't have to. She could hold on to this till later in the game. We, you know, it might be more beneficial, but she's gonna use it. She's gonna use her extra action and do a fourth action right now. Because, and I'll tell you why, she saw me tax. If I had done something else besides taxing there at the end, she might have held on to her extra action. But because she now knows that she is way behind in the money game, she's going to use her extra action and use it to get four more bucks. So that she can even the playing field, we are each going to go into the next auction with exactly the same amount of money. And that was Jen taking her last action. Okay, so that was the end of the first year. And now we move on to the second year, the second of four years. And Jen is the first player, so she will place the flag down and that will determine where we start doing, you know, the one, two, three auction, let's say, or you know, whatever it might be. So we're gonna have to give some thought to that because as you can see, the decisions you make have a huge impact. Because of the decisions we made at the beginning, we've both already gone on radically different paths. Me using Ginger to build my ship building, Jen um, going colonization and being able to supplement her colonization because of her expedition cards, and getting into the nutmeg business, which will improve her expeditions, etc., etc. Now, if you want to watch, I think I will actually play through the entire first year. So you will get to see all, or I'm sorry, the entire first four years. The, all the A phase, so you can see all that stuff and then I'll bring out the B, and that'll all happen in the extended. So you get to see a lot more action, a lot more auctions, a lot more oh, brain burning decisions, or you can hit the other button, uh, both of them are on screen right now, that'll take you to final thoughts. Your choice, five, four, three, two, one.